the LBR doesn't really give staff the ability to approve something like this. It doesn't give us a wiggle room, so to speak, which is why we're here. Again, you can see a couple more facade um, pictures. There's the existing building, as it currently stands. And adjacent properties, you've got hotels, you've got gas stations, other restaurants, things of that nature. Staff reviewed the request, found it to be consistent, and we support the variance. Any questions? Any questions for staff at this time? I mean, for the board for staff at this time? Thank you very much. Is there anyone here on behalf of RREMC restaurants that would like to give us additional information? <clears throat> yes, sir. My name is Mike Wolsey with uh, RREMC, stands for Restaurant Real Estate Management Corporation, LLC. <clears throat> 1800 Old Oak Children Road, Suite 100 in West Palm Beach, Florida. We are a large uh, Denny's franchisee. We have approximately 35 stores. Uh, throughout three states, Georgia, Florida, and Virginia. This structure exists today in another location. It is a Department of Community Affairs uh, uh, modular structure. It will grow wheels and move from that location to Valdosta, Georgia after uh, subsequent permit, after this is approved, after permits are approved, <coughs> and will be placed upon that site as you saw on the site. Um, it is a very efficient design in terms of it's, it's smaller. It has um, uh, uh, a lot of booth design uh, and it's got a, a, a small uh, dining room, if you will. Uh, it must meet all of the building codes, which it will, wind codes, and it gets built, it gets a building permit for a foundation, and it has to be inspected in, inside by your fire department or your fire marshal. So it, it pretty much meets all of the requirements in addition to the zoning requirements that we're here for today and setbacks, parking, etc. <clears throat> it is, uh, in truth and fact, a, a complete Denny's in a package. Uh, I promised that I wouldn't say much, so I'm going to open it up to, to you folks. If you have any questions of me, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much. Any questions just yes, now? It's significantly smaller than the existing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And ma that's so that you can fit another restaurant. No, 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 no. Not, not, well, that is a bonus, okay? It is what it is. It exists as a, like a 3,500 square foot building today, and it will continue to, to be that size. Right. With its... Uh, Amenities. It's got a a, a, a double door for the, the front for weather. It's got a cooler in the back and what have you. So it'll be the same size as it is today, about 3,500. The old building is is huge, uh, in excess of uh, let me say about five or six thousand square feet. And, so, and so this more appropriately meets the needs of the customers that you have at that location. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when I said efficient. It, it's easy to turn tables in this type of restaurant because it's small. About 105 seats. How many is in your existing Denny's now? I think it's permitted for over 200. And uh, it's so large and spread out that it's hard to maintain service in all the different corners of the, of the building. It's been remodeled so many times that it, the traffic flow inside is tough. Okay? This, there's one way in and one way out. And this building actually dates back to the 60s. The design, or yes, about The design. Uh, it, it will have. Uh, it's, it's, no, I'm, I'm talking about the existing building. Oh, the existing now. building, 1958. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, I thought I remember being. We were just talking about that. It was the restaurant for the old Howard Johnson's right. chain there. Yes, sir. Any other questions, discussions from the board at this time? Did you conduct a, a marketing analysis to determine to demolish the old building and bring a new building in according to the profit maker? It's economics is what it is in terms of the construction and the, 
know, revitalization of that old structure. Yeah. It was so very expensive, and the, the way that it would have to be remodeled, you, you could not keep anything open while it was being remodeled. And the time frame for this, after permits are accepted and after it's demolished, we, we can bring this in, have it on a foundation, and have it ready to train people in it in eight weeks. I didn't say open, but I mean to train, to start training people in eight weeks. A stick built structure, six months. For a new stick built structure, for the remodeling of that, I couldn't even tell you because there were so many roof problems at this at this location. The, the old, I'm talking about the old building. Any other questions or discussion? Will the Hurricane Grill and Wings be the same type of structure? No, sir. It, it'll be stick built. And, and, and we're not discussing that today. There's no permits being requested for that. There's no, there's no other uh, uh, anything being requested for that at this time. It, it's, not, it's not on the table. Uh, it's, it's future. Okay. Any other questions or discussions? Anyone else here in support that would like to give us any additional information? Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Steve Williams. I reside at 907 Plantation Drive, Adel. I'm here representing Williams Investment Company, who's the owner of the two adjacent, immediately adjacent hotels, the Holiday Express and the Country Suites in the back door. I'm, I'm here to speak in favor of the proposal. Looking forward to being a neighbor with these guys, continuing to be a neighbor, and the building looks good to us as, as we're just not speaking in opposition. We're in favor of it. All right. Thank you very much. Anybody have questions, Mr. Williams? Does anybody else here in support? Does anyone here in opposition or anyone have a question about what's being requested that needs to be clarified? Any other discussions or questions by the board at this point? Can I get a motion on this request? I concur with staff and recommend approval. I have a motion from Mr. Ornstein to grant the request as presented. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Dr. Housel, all in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, sir. Good luck with it. Please make it look good right there so when they peel off the interstate we get a good first impression for the city of Al Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, before we go on to the next item, uh, Snap has one other question. We're really hoping for an affirmation from the board. Um, it's all in the packet that the reason for this variance is because of belly siding or sheet metal. Um, there's different ways to interpret that. We do not have the standard definition. It, in our view, this was not sheet metal, but it is using sheets of metal on the side. It is our belief that the intent of that regulation from the LBR was not to prohibit this kind of design, but for other more typical industrial types of design. And so part of the reason for coming through with this marriage request was out of abundance of caution um, to make sure that this is okay. So to help us, for future requests of this nature, you will affirm to us the fact that you concur with our belief that the intent was not to prohibit decorative design such as stainless steel siding, but industrial sheet metal. Industrial sheet metal meaning waffle pattern, vertical, regular sheet metal so building, like or sheet metal the roof there, yes. except on the side. Any problem with the board? If it needs to go in any form to city council, do we would like to see this modified or whatever? Right. We, we've already made a note to modify the language the next time we bring this chapter to LDR. One of the alternatives in processing this was either a variance from that requirement or an appeal of the interpretation of that requirement. So we thought the variance route was a friendlier way to do it, but I would sort of like to still have that other question answered. Just give it to me, so thank you very much. I have a question. 
does modifying it open some loophole of some sort where people might sneak through and say, mine is decorative, but it's not well, because we, I painted a picture on the side of it? Right, we, we'll get some, we have something to point to, um, and then we can make an interpretation on that, and if they don't like it, they can appeal that. Our concern was once this gets placed or built, and we tell the next guy you can't have sheet metal or metal siding, we'll point to the finger and say, this is sheets of metal on the side. Now we can say it's been approved by variance, and the intent of the regulation is blank. So, so we've got something more concrete to go on. Yeah, it's always subject to the interpretation based on what we offer today, based on what you share. Yes. So ultimately, the person would still have to submit an application, and we could take our time to Correct. They can go through the exact same process as they want. Okay. Anybody have a problem with that on the board? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The next case we'll call is application 2013-10, UHS Pruitt Corporation for Parkwood Development Center. This is the unusual case that I spoke with you about last week. It's too cold, and I'm not sure how the Board of Appeals would like to address this. In the past, we generally tried to look at them as a one picture because okay. I don't know how well one would stand up right. if the other one is denied. Okay. Well, how about stand for the board? I can do, we can do that. Okay. And I do have Jerry Palmer, he's from engineering here for any questions that we might have about the stream buffer on um, various requests. This specific various request is for UHS Crew Corporation, otherwise known as Parkwood Healthcare Properties to us local folks. It is on the corner of Lee and Boston. I never can pronounce that word, thank you. <laughs> Lee and the, start, the street that starts with a P. It is a healthcare facility on approximately five acres, just under five acres. It has been recently rezoned. The reason you're seeing this request is because they want to expand. However, the zoning does not support expansion. As you can see, it's R it was R6 and R10. However, it was recently rezoned last week to office professional. They did also get a commission on use permit to, per to permit the residential care facility in a okay. Next in front of you is a two-fold variance request. As you can see, there's the aerial. Matt, if you'll forward to the side plan, please. They're proposing two buildings, more beds and more activity area. The issue with the setbacks is with the activity buildings. It's about a 9,000 square foot facility, and it encroaches into the rear yard, buck, rear yard setback by approximately 10 feet. The rear yard setback in OP is 30 feet. As you can see, you've got the front yard, which is blocky, and I know I didn't say that right. And the side yard is, is Lee Street, and then the lot line to your right. Rear yard setback is unusual in this circumstance. If it was a side yard property line, the setback would be eight feet. So staff realizes it's an unusual situation. Also for the existing building, as it was built before the LBR, a long time before the LBR became effective, it's also encroaching into that 30 foot rear yard setback. So to kind of cover all the bases, we reviewed the request, you there to be hardship, and we're recommending coverage or support for both the new building and the existing building. Okay, that's kind of the end of the first variance. Second variance relates to this stream that wanders through. It is to my branch and is a state protected waterway. This particular building encroaches into the buffer. There's a 25 feet state buffer on each side. And then in addition to that, there's a 25 foot further city buffer that's not allowed to be encroached on by development. Well, this building is proposing 
encroachment slightly due to the 25 foot city bus. Now, staff again with the help of the engineering department. And Jerry, if you have anything to say, just let me know. With the help of engineering, we've reviewed that request and we also support that request. However, we would like to see some additional landscaping to kind of mitigate any negative impact to this development and require at least six canopy trees and 30 shrubs planted within the stream buffer area as approved by the engineering department and the city ordinance. Any questions? Yes, I have one. Does it encroach into the city? I mean, the estate? Is that that? Very hard. Because we can't, uh, you, sir, I mean, we can't go ahead. Correct. Right. It, it doesn't encroach into the state buffer. The state buffer is no encroachment at all, uh, trimming anything. Although this has been well cleared on the east side of the canal for years. Uh, but this building, like I said, will encroach within the city's 25 foot impervious buffer. And impervious means that like this floor, rooftops, no water will drain in. And they're pr proposing two spots. I believe one's the corner of the building extends in about 12 feet, and the other spot is between seven and nine for a total of about 220 square feet. Uh, one of the things we looked at with the arborist are, was along the east side, there is no shade. There is anything actually protecting the stream. So that was the reason for the proposal of the six canopy and the shrubs along that edge so we can try and work something back into it to where it will become like a shaded stream. One more question. Okay, so that disposes of the issue of uh, encroaching on state. Yeah, we're not on the state. Um, I can't figure out where that park is. 